Hello and welcome to this video demonstration. My name is Amanda. I'm from the University of North Texas COI Information Research and Analysis Lab. Today I'll be walking through the SPSS syntax provided by Crehe, Turner, Nyman, Zentech, and Henson in our 2012 Frontiers in Psychology article. This article is available on the Frontiers webpage. Um, the journal is open source, so that means that it's free for everyone. This SPSS syntax will provide beta weights, structure coefficients, commonality coefficients, and all possible subsets regression, as well as relative weights. So to get started, we'll scroll down to page 14, and we'll see here at the bottom we have our SPSS code to conduct all of these analyses. So what I would normally do in these videos is copy straight from the article and then paste into SPSS. However, there's some typesetting issues, so that isn't as easy as I would like. So to make this a little bit easier, I've provided a syntax file for download on my web page. To get that, just go to sites.google.com slash site slash Amanda Crahey slash syntax. So in this load, you'll see several syntax files associated with this paper. Um, we have the R, SAS, and SPSS versions on this web page. So go ahead and download the SPSS syntax. I'm going to save to my desktop. You can save to your working directory if you prefer. Once we have that, we can close out and go ahead and open SPSS. Once we have SPSS open, we'll go to File, Open, Syntax, and then we'll open that syntax file that we just downloaded. Now a quick note before we get started with this, um, there are several instances where we refer to a working directory. Um, in this example, the working directory is see my documents. If your working directory is different than that, you'll need to take some special care and go through and find every place where we do reference the working directory and change it to fit your computer setup. Once we're sure that our working directory, all of those paths, um, fit our computer, we can go ahead and get started with steps one and two here. These steps will create a raw data set based on a correlation matrix. And this code is provided courtesy of IBM 2010. You can see that more information right here up top. And the correlation matrix that we're using is from Azen and Budescu. Um, it's their suppression data set. Um, so we're just reproducing that here for illustration purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything underneath step one and hit the play button over here to run. Once that runs, you should get your correlation matrix. So you can see over here on the left hand side, we have um, our variables and then the correlation matrix is right here. So that means we're ready to move on to step two, which will actually create the raw data with 200 cases. So I'm going to highlight everything underneath step two and hit the play button to run. So once you have this end matrix, you know that you're good to go. Now this should have done two things for you. It should have created a correlation matrix data set and um, an an SPSS data set called A's and data um, dot save. So I'm just going to go ahead and show real quick that we do in fact have those in our working directory now. So here you can see the correlation matrix and then the A's and data that was created using the correlation matrix. So we're going to use syntax to open that A's and data file. So going back to our syntax step three, um, this syntax will open that file. So we'll go ahead and pull that up. And you can see here we have our four variables named column one, two, three, and four, which um, is kind of difficult for interpretation purposes. So why don't we go ahead and rename those, which is what step four will do for us. We're going to rename these to be Y and then X1, 2, and 3. So highlight the code under step four and hit the play button to run. And you'll see over here our variable names have changed, Y, X1, 2, and 3. So make sure you save that data or the following code will not work. 
So step five um, is just going to provide a correlation matrix. We included this as a check of the original syntax. Um, so if you take a look at that, you could see that it matches our original correlation matrix perfectly. So we know that we're conducting analyses on the right set of data. That means we're ready to conduct our regression analysis. So in step six, that's what we do. Now this code will do the typical regression and it's also going to save our Y hat scores so that we can correlate them with our predictors in the next step for structure coefficients. So go ahead and highlight everything underneath step six and hit the play button to run. So here you can see the typical regression output. You have your variables entered, R, R squared adjusted R. You have your p-value, and then you have your betas and some residual statistics. Then moving to step seven, we're going to calculate structure coefficients. These are just the bivariate correlation between a predictor variable and the predicted y-hat score. So I'm gonna highlight everything in step seven and hit play to run. And here you can see structure coefficients for x1, 2, and 3. So moving on to step 8, we will conduct all possible subsets analysis and a commonality analysis. But before we do so, we need to download a commonality coefficients macro from Dr. Nyman's webpage. So go ahead and highlight that web address, right click copy, open your um, explorer of choice and then paste that in and hit enter to load. Now this will load in one of two ways. One way is that you could get a dialog box asking you to save. If you do, go ahead and save to your working directory. The other way is that you could get all of this text here, which is fine. It, we just have to take a couple of steps to get this into SPSS. So if you got this text, right click select all, right click copy, and then back in SPSS go to file, new, syntax, right click and paste, and now we're going to save as, file then save as, and I'm going to change this to my working directory because that's where we're pulling everything from, and this file name should be commonality coefficients dot SPS. So I'm going to save that. Once it's saved, we can close it. Step 9 says copy data file to working directory. We've already done that, so we don't need to worry with that. In step 10, we're going to change our directory and also include the commonality coefficients syntax that we just created. So I'm going to highlight just those two lines from step 10 and hit play. and you should get output that looks like this. You have your CD command and then you have include file and then you have some print back options and so on and so forth. Now this last line of code under step 10 is just to pull up that file if we don't already have it open, which in our case we do, so we don't need to worry about that. We can just skip it. If for some reason you close that data set, you can use this line to open that back up. And our next four lines of code will conduct our um, all possible subsets regression and commonality analysis. We have our dependent variable here, y, our um, data set name, and then we have our independent variables, x1, 2, and 3. Let's go ahead and highlight those four lines. And I'm going to pull this, I'm going to snap this syntax to the right so we can see what's going on with SPSS on the left. Highlight those four lines and then hit play. And here you should see the macro opening some files, closing some files, doing the various computations in order to get these numbers for us. So in step 11, it tells us that where our commonality and APS results are, which of course, they're in our working directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up again. So here we have ASIN APS, which is our APS results, of course, and then we have two different commonality data sets with our results in two different ways. 
So we'll go ahead and open the APS data set and you can see x1, 2, 3 associated R squares and then we have our various combinations with their R squares. So that's our all possible subsets results. And then we have our commonality results. You can see all of the unique, common, and total variants associated with x1, x2, and x3. And then our A's and commonality matrix data set gives a little bit more information. So here we can see variants unique to x1, 2, 3, and then what's common to x1, x2, common to x1, x3, common to x2, x3, and then common to all variables in the analysis. And then of course here at the bottom we have our totals. So that is our APS and commonality results. So moving forward, we're ready to start with our relative weights. So before we do anything, we need to download the mimr underscore raw dot spss. Um, so there's the address for that. So go ahead and highlight, right click to copy, and then paste into your browser of choice. So this Lorenzo Seva paper has um, several methods to do this and they also have these great supplemental materials here so we're going to click on the supplemental materials and then click again supplemental materials and I'm just going to open. So you can see here if you open the BRM 2010 folder these authors have provided um, a data set and then two syntax files if you're working from a correlation you'll use this one that says COR, if you have raw data, you'll use underscore raw. And then they even have um, manuals that explain what's going on and how to use this stuff, so that's really great too. For our purposes, we need the um, raw version of the syntax. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And here on the reliabilities, we need to change this. I'm not interested in correcting for any of that for the purposes of this paper. Um, so I'm just going to give it all ones. And then you could see you can change to um, detailed or simple output, and we'll keep detailed. And if you want confidence intervals, you can do that as well, which for our purposes, we don't really need. So I'm going to change it to zero, but you can, um, if you're more interested in these, you can spend some time with their manual. So I'm going to go ahead and open our data set back up because it closed after that last analysis. And here you can see our setup, our dependent variable is first, and then our independent variables, which is important for this syntax. So with that open, I'm going to make sure I have this um, syntax here, as opposed to our early version, control A, to select all of it, and then I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to let this matrix compute um, my relative weights for me. And here you can see the author information and the date and all that good stuff. So you have sample statistics, sample size, correlation matrix is here again, regression results are here, and they also provide betas, structure coefficients, correlations, and then here at the bottom we have our relative contribution to um, the multiple R reported as a percentage, and these are our relative weights, so X is 0 .80, um, X2 0.05 and x3 is about 0.15. Well that about does it for this video demonstration. Again my name is Amanda. I'm from the University of North Texas COI Information Research and Analysis Lab. Um, you can visit us at our webpage. The address is www.coi.unt.edu slash IRA lab. On our webpage, you can find out more about us. You can see our hours, schedule an appointment to come talk to me about your research. Um, we have a couple of these demonstration videos on here under how to, as well as a whole host of both qualitative and quantitative research resources. So feel free to take advantage of that. And thanks again.